But we are now live, Mark. I know who is the man that joins me in the top right hand corner. That is Mr. Oh, pointing the wrong way. That is Mr. Mark Mayo. I am Dan Wimbush, editor of the Tylerstend.com. Thank you very much indeed for joining us for this post game show. Mark, we've got a win to talk about. 3 1 win over Blackburn. <laughs> Talked about this game a lot in the build-up. Is this going to be one of those games where Reading stroll through or is this going to be a tricky game against a, a dogged side? But in the end, it was quite pedestrian. Yeah, it was a regulation three points, I would say, pretty much. In the end, it was one of those we could uh, we could sit back at half-time and think that's pretty much the points in the bag. And then um, the second-half performance has confirmed it as near as much as we were going to really... Blackburn were always going to come out at 2-0 football, they call it, don't they, and have a good go. But we were pretty comfortable in the end, and Gareth McCleary's goal uh, sealed the points, didn't they? Yeah, um, two absolutely lovely headers from Jan Kermigan. It was funny, I was in the news conference with Yaps down before the Leeds game, and one of the journalists there said uh, to Jan, who was, who was the player to follow Yap, and said, oh, you don't actually, haven't actually scored many goals from headers this season. What is that? Is that surface or something from you? Turns around tonight and bags too just so lovely to see him get those those two goals and for once Reading to pretty much put a game to bed early doors yeah absolutely we haven't really been scoring too early it's been kind of I think most of our goals has been kind of around the half time mark haven't they and certainly to keep a clean sheet in the first half was kind of it was very reminiscent of the Leeds game in a lot of ways and that the way that we kind of dominated the first half then the second half they came out at us and then we got the the sort of points sealed in the end without too much uh, drama but um, as you're saying on the Kermit headers I thought they were two excellent deliveries certainly from Blackett it was a really nice ball in to get the uh, the first goal and then Swift doing his usual business in and around the final third getting the uh, the decisive goal uh, assist for the second goal Absolutely nothing you can really fault in that way and Way. and the way that results went elsewhere just again fantastic as far as Reading are concerned you you can't can't really ask for a better night I know Sheffield Wednesday won um, beating uh, a poor Rotherham side but otherwise you know a fantastic effort all round yeah and looking ahead I mean we got Leeds playing Preston on the weekend so it's a it's a good time for these teams to be playing each other and um, uh, Brentford away is always a tricky game we know Leeds were gonna stumble in some way there and obviously we did as well so it's nice that 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 happens and Huddersfield playing Norwich on Wednesday night as well keeps the it just keeps everyone turning over and keeps things ticking around means that no one has the ability to pull up a real head of steam as it were. Yeah, hopefully you'll be able to see the, uh, the the scores from elsewhere uh, up on your screen now as to how the other teams have been getting on. But, you know, as far as we're concerned, you know, awesome, really. You can't ask for much better than that. Um, you know, especially to get that, that gap now building. I'll float up the league table as well. Andrew Vickery saying, I think we need about 80 points. Um what do you reckon? Is that, I mean, is that the target we need to aim for? Seven more. Well, I mean, if you look at it the other way around, that would need Fulham to win sixteen points out of a possible. Uh, is it twenty-four? I'm not very good at maths. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, they've got six games left, so uh, eighteen, isn't it? So they they need to win six, sixteen points out of eighteen, and we would have to win seven. Um, I'd expect us to win at least nine. So yeah, I think. Probably more like 78. Yeah, you like to think so. Um, the other teams around, I mean, Derby, they're on a bit of a charge, but I think it's too little too late for them. They're on 59 points, so they're, what, 14 oh, yeah. Yeah. points adrift from us. Um, nice to go above Huddersfield as well. There was some talk this week about where exactly do you want to finish in terms of a playoff context? Do you want that home game first, or... Do you want the uh, the traditional, what's seen as the advantage, of playing away first? Do you want to finish in third or fourth, or would you maybe be happy finishing in fifth or sixth? To be honest, I would take third or fourth. You, you typically, we've seen quite a few times of you know, Sheffield Wednesday went to Brighton and won last year. We obviously went to Cardiff and um, won in the second leg a few years ago. It is kind of a benefit to go away um, in the second leg, but I think 
with the fact that you're playing teams like Leeds and Sheffield Wednesday, possibly Huddersfield, who are going to have that big support base behind them, get really yeah. excited. If they get a good result at the Medeski, then that'll make things really tough. So I would probably just about go with the, the typical sense of getting the, uh, the home leg in uh, second. Yeah, Brad Willis saying, I think we'll get 91 and steal Brighton's spot when they finally choke. I, I can't see them. I can't see the top two choking at this stage. Surely we, we've we got to give up that ghost. Yeah, no, I think it pretty much is. I think um, third is absolutely up for grabs. Huddersfield, are, you know, they can choke a little bit. But the, I was kind of thinking this earlier. Is, now is kind of a good time to have a little bit of a downturn because then maybe you win the last three games, you go into the playoffs on a bit of form or what have you, but it's going to be... I mean, I get those gut feelings, but my head says that by the time the semi-finals come around and Wembley, etc., all form just goes out the window and it's completely irrelevant. Yeah, we'll talk a lot more about um, the game in tomorrow's Tarless Den podcast. Um, you're a guest on the show, as is Westy. That'll be up tomorrow afternoon. So I don't want to talk in too much detail about the game. I want to save that for the show but just on the night we did see quite a few changes from the apps down the likes of Adrian Popper came in uh, Reese Oxford and Jordan Much in as well what sort of competition have they created for Yap going forward because you know historically you say don't change a winning side but you would also argue that you know the likes of Paul McShane are fit Danny Williams Gareth McCleary they're automatic stars I mean Williams and McCleary both came on in this game I mean what does Yap do does he go back to the tried and tested strongest inverted comma teams or does he show a bit of faith with the likes of Oxford and Popper I think it's going to be horses for courses in the sense that we're playing Blackburn tonight we could play much in a central midfield while we could have him kind of sitting deep and dictating the play when it comes to the playoffs you're going to be playing teams that are far more you would think far more pressing, far more attacking, high quality teams that could take advantage of you more. In that sense, you're going to have to mitigate it, play players like Williams and Vandenberg if they're fit. I would certainly have McShane and Moore as my centre-back pairing out of choice. And if not, I would probably think that he'll still go with Blackett if Obita's fit for left-back. Yeah, I thought Tyler Blackett had a really nice game tonight he does have these these games where he looks really class remember against Barnsley in that nil nil draw I thought okay he's really come of age and he just when he's confident and he's got that swagger he's a real asset to the team but he does just have those little nervous few moments and with Thiago Alori coming back to fitness as well it's going to create real competition in that back line yeah definitely Alori he's obviously want, wanting to use Alori because he brought him on for 20 minutes tonight and if he wasn't bothered about him he wouldn't have played him so there's that sense of who's going to be the first choice if McShane and or more can't play. It's quite likely that one of them will be missing in the playoffs and the run-in because um, they both have had the odd injury concern this season. So um, Ilori, I think he might just jump Oxford in that sort of sense. Yeah, I thought Oxford did absolutely fine. He came off late on with, I think he was holding his hamstring just before the injury, so I think there might be something to do. Um with that, I've got some more comments. Thank you very much to everyone who's joined in and, and tuning in for this. Rob's asking, look up Brighton and Fulham's fixtures. What kind of run-ins have they got? Uh, Richard Holloway was listening to commentary from Holiday in Queenstown, New Zealand. So, very nice, Richard. I wish, I, I wish we were off there. Uh, he says, got to beat Norwich and Villa. Both tough. And Brad's also following up on his comment earlier. He's saying, never give up. We won't give up. We, you know, We're not going to give up completely on that dream of... Uh, of the top two, but realistically, I mean, I'm going to look up Brighton's fixtures now in their their final run, in their final six games. Let's see who they've got first of all. In my internet browser, plays ball. Unfortunately, I can't fade in all the graphics I want. Uh, right, Brighton have got QPR away, Wolves away, Wigan at home, Norwich away, Bristol City at home. Yeah. And when you're, you're talking about realistically looking at them, maybe picking up six points for having to catch them. They've got at least two wins there. I mean, they're going to beat Wigan at home and they're going to beat Bristol City at home, surely, as a minimum. Well, maybe it's going to be uh, Newcastle in that case. The thing is with Newcastle is that they've got Burton at home, Preston at home, Barnsley at home. And, you know, they play Leeds and Sheffield Wednesday and Preston are up there as well. But um, I, I would say Newcastle just on points, like you can't, you can't have anything else at the moment. Just on points, I would say Newcastle are the one that you'd be looking at. Um, but, you know, they'll probably beat Burton. 
they'll probably beat Ipswich and Cardiff and then that'll that'll be it. Yeah, and Fulham's fixtures, they've got Ipswich at home, Norwich away, Villa at home, Huddersfield away and Brentford at home. So some tricky fixtures there. Um, and it's that last game of the season, isn't it? That Sheffield Wednesday against Fulham game that is going to be really crucial for us because it basically means that those teams are going to drop at least two from now to the end of the season. So that's automatically sort of gives... I can't do the maths in my head right now, but it automatically gives us a bit of a boost, doesn't it? Knowing in that game that at least one of those teams are going to drop points. Yeah, and I, I did a video a couple of weeks ago saying that Norwich basically play all of the good teams, including ourselves, so they can have a big role in taking, you know, the likes of Sheffield Wednesday, Fulham and Leeds down a peg if we need them to. Yeah. So, I mean, anything else? Anything else that stood out for you tonight? Anything that uh, give you cause for concern before we wrap this show up? Um, I'm trying to think of causes for concern. Really, I think these are the type of games you just get out the way, in a sense. You get the points on the board and then you move on. As I say, by the time you get to the playoffs, it's not necessarily going to be so important exactly how we're doing. Uh, form is largely going to go out the window. Player performances, you would pick up and say... Gareth McCleary, I didn't think had a good game at all. Uh, bar his goal, obviously. Um, Popper, Oxford, and the like coming on, as we've said, them pu- pushing their impetus a little bit further forward and doing a little bit more in the team is good. Um, nothing else particularly troubled me, to be honest. The fact that Obita was out, I don't think we know how long he's out for. And obviously, Blackett playing well covers that option quite nicely, but you want to have a full squad going into the playoffs. So I would say that for sure. Oh, well, the, the squad depth is, is one of the most pleasing things. You look at the amount of players. I mean, the likes of Yaku Meite, um, who at times have contributed this season. I mean, he wasn't even in the squad. We had the return of Joseph Mendes. He does exist. He does exist. He was there Absolutely, the yeah. Anyway. It was, it, <laughs> yeah, he came He came on at Birmingham a few month, months ago, it probably was now. So he, he does float around. But I can't think of um, exactly what moment he would have been brought onto the pitch, given that Grabham was also on the bench. Yeah, uh, g- We've got a, a message in from Handbags Harris. He says, um, Gareth McLeary knew he didn't have a good game. Have a look at his Twitter. And I'm just looking at it now. He said, um, just looking at that. I think that was the most eventful yet comical 35 minutes I've had in football. <laughs> Hashtag space jammed. Yeah, so, no, uh, I, I think that's fair enough. The thing is with McLeary, we've said before on this show that he's, as a winger, he'll come and go. The good thing tonight is that he got the goal. He put the effort in. Hopefully, in his uh, his next performances, we'll have him at the the highest level that we know he can reach. Absolutely, he needs to bury a one on one just for his own confidence. Uh, right, just before we go, then let's wrap up a couple of final comments uh, from the stream. Again, thanks for everyone joining in. It, it makes it worthwhile. We actually get some people watching. Uh, Paul Hobbs asks, "How good was Liam Moore tonight? My Player of the Season." Yeah, I was thinking about player of the season earlier. Uh, McCleary was interestingly my choice at the start of game, start of the game. I don't want to say just yet. I think it's uh, it's tough, but there's about five or six players that I could easily make a good case for. Yeah, absolutely. And Jack Killick, a regular contributor to the Tullison podcast, he says credit to Reading, but Blackburn were shocking first half. Where do they rank? Yeah, first half, second half. The... I was going to say where oh, do they rank? The the second half, they were decent. I, where were they? as opposed to where they rank um, I don't know I've not been to quite as many games as I would like I would, in, if I was to compare them to Leeds I would say they were pretty much the same if a little more ambitious in the second half yeah I think they're down I've got to say they're down there with Burton as, as amongst I mean the last one of the last teams we put three past um, though we got to get three against Burton uh, Brentford sorry I seem to get B's we seem to do well against teams winning with B so there you go Shame yeah, we can't yeah. have one of those in the playoffs. Bristol City. Yeah, I mean, you have to go back to Norwich uh, on Boxing Day for the last time we won by more than a clear goal at home. But that's tw- I suppose you look at it, that's twice in the last three games now we have got that clear goal win. I know Sheffield Wednesday was a, was a bit of a last-minute gift. But even so, I mean, that they're coming into form at just the right time to get into that momentum and get and roll through the playoffs. So I said... You know, form is what you need. I did an article the other day looking at teams that have gone up through the playoffs and you generally needed to be sort of getting around that sort of 15, 16 point mark from your final eight games. That was the general sort of mark of teams that made it through. And we're doing that. So it's all good. I mean, it's by the sounds of it, I've only read brief snippets from Stam and his post-match comments, but it sounds like he was um, he had mixed feelings like we all did. Uh, it's really difficult to judge 
a team when you play such poor opposition. Um, but and most of all, Mark, I've not said this at all, but you can see by the stats in the top right-hand corner, Reading lost possession to Blackburn. Yeah, we've we've um, we've we've changed a little bit. This is kind of my my kind of optimism at the moment is based on the fact we're kind of on an, a curve upwards. You see how we peaks and troughs all over the season, but at the moment we're becoming more pragmatic. We're keeping clean sheets. I know we didn't keep one today, but it's a very good goal that Blackburn scored. Oh, cracker! And yeah, absolutely. So you know, it, we're kind of we're changing progressively I would describe it as we're not stubbornly sticking anymore to certain plays and we're playing a bit more on the counter-attack we're not very good at it but we're playing a bit more on the counter-attack which is quite nice okay well we'll wrap it up there as I said uh, the two of us are going to be back for the Tyler Stem podcast tomorrow please get your thoughts in on Twitter at the Tyler Stem you go to the Facebook page that you're on right now leave comments as well We'll try and get through as many as we can in the mailbag the Tyler Stem at gmail.com if you've got extended thoughts as well please uh, give that Get, give us your thoughts in and we'll do our best to get through the mailbag. We'll also have lots more thoughts on this game. Westy will be joining us as well. So look forward to that. And as always, thank you for bearing with us. I know there was a, a, an unfortunate... Well, I haven't listened back, but I think there was a moment where we lost sound. It's uh, still very much the learning process here. We're still the unprofessional joke of a YouTube channel. Um, but we're going to get better. So thank you very much for taking the time to join us. hope everyone has a good night. Uh, and we'll be back with hopefully more YouTube videos and bits and pieces and that podcast tomorrow. So, Mark, thanks very much for joining us and uh, have a good night. So, right, thanks, man. Take it easy, buddy.